Coming up, we're going to show you how you can spot yourself without a cellular connection. That's next on Ham Radio Q&A. KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if you like more content like that, like and subscribe. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's on patreon.com slash KB9VBR antennas. Well, this weekend, I'm with Dave, KZ9V, over at Black River State Forest in western Wisconsin. Uh, Black River State Forest is kind of located halfway between Eau Claire and La Crosse, uh, right off of I-9094, and it's a beautiful spot uh, for... Uh, uh, outdoor activities, hiking, biking, or just relaxing, which is what we're doing, uh, joint uh, Parks on the Air activations. And as part of Parks on the Air activations, one of the things you like, you may want to do for a successful activation is spot yourself. And a lot of times we do that with our cell phone, but occasionally we might, you know, you and I or anybody else might be in a spot where we can't get a cellular signal and you reliably are, you know, uh, aren't getting any contacts reliably enough that somebody can spot you on your behalf. So to kind of grease the wheels and to get things in motion, uh, Dave has got a procedure using an application, a digital application called JSA Call that you can use to um, send your own spot uh, via the digital JSA Call. So I'm gonna send it over to Dave, KZ9V, to walk you through how to spot yourself without a cell phone. Dave, there's a way we can we can get ourselves spotted if you've got a digital mode with you, but you don't have you don't have a cell signal. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, a lot of people are familiar with uh, reverse beacon network, where if you schedule an activation and you're operating with either CW or radio teletype or FT8, the monitors of the reverse beacon network will pick you up and they'll match you with your activation schedule and they'll automatically post you even though you have no cell service and no internet access so it's pretty sweet but for the guys that are running single sideband that doesn't work and there so there's no way to spot yourself without internet access or, or cell coverage well it turns out they've they've uh, utilized a program called JS8 call and it's much like WSJTX's uh, FT8 and FT4. It's a very low signal mode. It's actually designed to be semi-conversational, but it's so slow uh, in the number of characters per minute that it's painful to uh, carry on a conversation. So I seldom use uh, JS8 call for, for that. But you can send a message through the gateway to actually post your activation on the POTA website, which is the ultimate goal here. So if you're, if you're familiar with, with uh, JS8 Call, uh, this some, some of this will be repetitive. If, if you're not, JS8 Call is free and it's downloadable on the internet and it's uh, pretty self-explanatory once you load it up and, and enter your calls and things like that. So we won't, we won't focus on that, but we want to send the message that I'm going to start an activation this afternoon on uh, 40 meters. Before we start, before we kind of begin this whole process, we want to make sure that um, somebody's going to receive our message. So uh, what do you do for that? Well, we, there's a cycle that you can transmit that asks any stations that pick up your signal to respond with a signal report. It's called a heartbeat acknowledgement. And so it's a good idea to send that before we try to spot ourselves, just to make sure that someone is picking us up. And it's the icon on the, on the bottom left of the JSA call page. And when I click on that, what it's going to do is send out a heartbeat signal, essentially identifying myself. And stations that are monitoring the signal and uh, at the moment I'm on 40 meters and the, the uh, JS8 call standard frequency for 40 meters is 7.078 and it's in the process of sending that heartbeat right now and it will take a, uh, a few seconds it's finished the transmission now and, it, and so now I'm receiving and any stations manned or unmanned that picked up my heartbeat signal are going to send an acknowledgement here and that will confirm to me 
that I am in fact being received. And, and there are, there's one right there. So I know there's at least one and there, there are probably others out there. So <clears throat> I'm gonna change to a little bit lower frequency. And now I'm going to send a, the, the actual message which I have saved, and that's, that's really what you want to do is put it into your uh, archive, and it's critical that the format of the message conform exactly with the POTA requirements. And I mean, the, the spacing between the characters and the number of characters and where you place your call sign, all of this stuff, and Michael will put the graphic on the screen of the video for you, but it's critical that it be exact because uh, any any errors or lack of spacings or too much spacings and the the message will fail. So one of the things the machine has to do is to parse the that message so it's really important to get those characters correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a message that I have pre-entered here and, and what it is is it's uh, an APR SISS command going through the POTA gateway and it's saying that Station KZ9B is going to start an activation at Park K4348, which is where we're at here this, this weekend in Wisconsin. The frequency that I will be on is 7248, which was clear a few minutes ago, and hopefully it will still be clear when, when I get done uh, sending my spotting information. That will be on single sideband. And I put the word now after it. That will appear in the comments. It's not necessary, but but I'll put that in there. So I'm good with that, so I'm gonna click on it. And I'll click on OK. Now I'm back on the main screen. I go to Saved. I'm gonna click the message that we just looked at. And now what it's going to do is, is chop that up into uh, bite-sized pieces. And the uh, information is conveyed in, in increments of a limited number of characters, and I forget the exact number of characters, but this message is sufficiently long that it has to get broken up into about four transmission cycles. So if you, if you watch the radio, you'll see it transmits a cycle, stops for a couple of seconds, and then transmits another cycle, and then stops. And it, and it will take, a, it'll take us about a minute to convey this entire message. I'm on 40 meters. The two best bands for sending successful spotting messages, in my experience, has been 20 meters and 40 meters. Because that's probably the bands that have the most activity with the, uh, uh, the remote receive stations. It's, I would think so. Yep, I would expect that. But it's pretty cool. Okay, so it's all done. It's, uh, it's completed its task. And now the information has to get transferred. It's, it's out of our hands at this point, but it's getting transferred through the gateway to the POTA website. And I got you right here on the Parks on the Air spotting page. Yeah, and there it is, uh, KZ9V 4348, and it, it's figured out that that's the Black River Forest uh, State Park, which is exactly right, and that, uh, that's where we are. It was spotted by me. It, it looks exactly the same as if we had sent it directly through our phone or through the computer. So it, it's a marvelous tool, you know, if you're in the middle of the desert or, or uh, you know, I've been in many parks, even right here in Wisconsin, where you know, outside the park you, got, you have a nice cell signal and it never fails, you get to the campsite and oh darn, I've had no, no coverage. No coverage, yeah, that's happened, that's happened more than once, so. So it's very cool, it's, uh, it's not fast, and it does require uh, precision in the message, but it does not require a lot of power. Um, the, only, the only limiting factor is that obviously it does require a computer. You know, you have to bring your laptop along. And for guys like me that, that operate uh, with FT8 or some of the other data modes, or we use the, the laptop for logging, it's no big deal. We just, uh, it's just one more software application. And it's a real handy and super helpful uh, application. 
thanks a lot, Dave, for sharing that with us. And uh, it's really a, a, a great tool to have in your toolkit if you're in an area where you can't get out with your phone, but you still want to be able to uh, successfully activate a park. Well, do you have any questions about using JS8 Call to uh, activate yourself? Uh, please leave them in the comments below. We'll filter through those, try to answer your questions, and who knows, maybe your question will an end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. But for more articles and information and j -Pole antennas for sale, check out my website, www.jpole-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so you can do a few things for me. Like and subscribe are very helpful and free. And also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's on patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.